It wasn't much fun when I broke my neck last year, but now I can look back and laugh. Today, I'm going to recap a 2019 action crime film called The Hard Way. The film opens with a pair of police officers in hot pursuit of a criminal, though in the midst of this, an officer by the name of Cody sustains serious injuries and the felon they are chasing slips away. In addition to Cody, an innocent bystander is also shot by the runaway criminal. Cody's fellow officer, Mason, is visibly distressed by the unfolding situation. Despite Mason's attempts to console the injured Cody with promises of approaching help, Cody is convinced of his impending doom and urges Mason to reach out to his brother, John, to help rescue his former wife from a man named Poro. Mason makes a solemn promise to convey the information to John. Cody's sibling, John Payne, is a retired Special Forces officer who now runs a pub in the suburban parts of New York City. One evening, the bar is officially closed, but it sees the unexpected arrival of two individuals who identify themselves as businessmen interested in purchasing John's establishment. They flaunt their financial capability, insisting John vacate the place immediately. Nonetheless, John remains unmoved and has no plans to relinquish his bar rejecting any monetary offers they make. This refusal infuriates the men, who begin to make racist remarks about John's ethnicity and issue threats to kill him if he continues to refuse the sale. John, however, demonstrates he won't be intimidated, responding with force to both of them. Shortly after the incident, he receives news of his brother Cody's passing, and he is left heartbroken. Come morning, he journeys into the city to meet Briggs, Cody's latest superior. Briggs discloses that Cody was killed during an operation, an assignment handed down by his previous supervisor. Cody and his team were involved in tracking down culprits from black market trade operations when Cody tragically fell victim. The following day, Cody's funeral takes place, with Mason, Cody's closest friend, among the mourners, clearly grief-stricken. It becomes apparent that Cody had been led into an ambush during his operation, resulting in his untimely death. Briggs and a number of other officers also attend the funeral, and there, they encounter Cody's ex-spouse, Lacey, who is surrounded by a group of people as she departs the ceremony. Volley, another close friend of Cody's, approaches John. He speculates that the cause of Cody's death was linked to his informant, given that once Cody's informant was caught by the head of the syndicate, Toro, he became a marked man. On hearing this, John says that once he's calmer, He'll arrange to meet with Volley for a more detailed discussion. Meanwhile, Mason, who has been conducting undercover surveillance on the syndicates, notices Lacey in the company of a man named Jovic, who is reputed to be Toro's right-hand man and an active field agent. After Lacey and Jovic leave the building, Mason covertly enters, but his presence is detected, leading to a gunfight. Mason, however, successfully escapes the dangerous situation. Elsewhere, Volley receives a visit from a group of men who ruthlessly murder him and his family. The inference here is that these men work for Toro, who won't tolerate any form of disruption to his operations. In the aftermath of these events, Briggs confronts Mason, declaring his intention to send additional forces to conclude the mission. Meanwhile, Mason advocates for a momentary respite to process the loss of his fallen partner. Once Briggs takes his leave, Mason promptly reaches out to John, proposing a meeting at a local pub. Upon John's arrival, he crosses paths with his ex-spouse, Skye, who is currently employed as a dancer in the bar. Soon after Mason joins him, they observe Skye being harassed by a group of men who then drag her into a private room. Asking Mason to hold on for a moment, John springs into action, rushing after them. He decisively dispatches the men and instructs Skye to leave for home immediately. After that, John reconnects with Mason, who proceeds to divulge all relevant information. He reveals that Cody, Volley, and he were all working together on an investigation targeting a syndicate under Toro's leadership. Toro is an enigmatic figure who operates through his right-hand man, Jovic, who is the one responsible for Cody's murder under Toro's instructions. Regrettably, the only ones privy to the evidence incriminating Toro and Jovic, Cody, and Volley are now dead, leaving no one to challenge their crimes. When John inquires about Jovic's whereabouts, Mason points to the back of the pub, revealing that Jovic is, in fact, the owner. 
He visits the establishment every Monday and Thursday to inspect the new dancers, who, according to reports, also double as couriers for Toro's illegal commodities. On his journey home, Mason is ambushed by a group of assailants intent on killing him. Despite the odds, he manages to fend them off and survive the encounter. The narrative shifts back to John, who is now at his brother's residence. Relying on childhood knowledge about his brother's tendency to stash secret items in a specific location, he manages to find proof of Toro and Jovig's criminal activities. This evidence comprises a tape, a mobile phone, and a key. Upon viewing the footage, it reveals Jovig torturing Cody's informant, with Toro present in the background, his face cleverly obscured. Only the moment when Toro fires his gun at Cody's informant is captured. John also examines Cody's phone, finding a video in which Cody confesses he is being hunted by Toro's gang after confiscating their 5 million euros and stashing it in a safe accessible by the discovered key. Meanwhile, Sky and one of her acquaintances have an unexpected run-in with Jovic and his crew. Jovic interrogates them about the individual who had assaulted his men in his absence. Sky's friend claims it was merely a patron who happened to be there at the time. However, Jovig isn't convinced, lashing out at her. Nonetheless, Sky's friend stands up to Jovig, and they manage to make a swift escape. Jovig, without wasting any time, dispatches his henchmen to capture both Sky and her friend. The following morning, John is startled by an unexpected visitor at Cody's house, who turns out to be Mason. Apologizing for his startled reaction, John invites Mason in and offers him a seat. Once settled, John reveals the evidence he found implicating Toro and Jovic in the recent criminal activities, but admits they still lack concrete information about Toro's identity. Having seen Lacey leave with Jovic, both John and Mason decide to pay a visit to Cody's former spouse. Upon meeting Lacey, John broaches the topic of her connections with Toro and Jovic. She confides in him about an encounter with Toro's gang members, where they sought her help in recruiting women in need of employment. These women were supposed to serve as dancers and traffickers of illicit goods. When Lacey hesitated, they threatened the lives of Cody and his brother, coercing her into compliance. She was even forced into divorcing Cody and catering to their every whim, given her limited options. Soon after this revelation, John receives a distressing video message from his ex-wife's phone displaying the cruel torture and eventual murder of Skye and her friend at the hands of Jovig. Immediately, John heads to Jovig's bar in a fit of fury. Jovig's lieutenant denies knowledge of Jovig's whereabouts, prompting John to retaliate physically. Despite numerous guards attempting to subdue him, they fail. One by one, John manages to defeat them all without a scratch. Eventually, someone divulges that Jovig is holed up in an upstairs room, already on high alert. Jovig opens fire on anyone entering the room, inadvertently shooting his own lieutenant. Blinded by rage, John engages with Jovic, ultimately breaking his neck. He then questions Jovig's wounded lieutenant about the elusive Toro. The man confesses frequent meetings with Toro, but explains that Toro always concealed his face and altered his voice, leaving only Jovig and Lacey Privy to his true identity. Upon hearing this, John promptly finds Lacey and delivers a message for Toro. He wants to arrange a meeting at an old castle in the city and is ready to return the 5 million euros his brother had seized, on the condition that Toro sets Lacey free. Subsequently, John seeks Briggs' assistance, asking for forces to surround Toro, but Briggs declines, citing John's civilian status. Disappointed but undeterred, John turns to Mason, explaining that Briggs has refused to provide support, leaving Mason as his only ally. Given Mason's hatred for Toro, he readily agrees to join John's crusade. Together, they devise multiple traps in preparation for their confrontation with Toro's forces. To sum it up briefly, Toro makes his appearance by evening, accompanied by a sizable army, and they disperse around the castle, encircling John. Toro, flanked by a multitude of his men, steps out from his vehicle and commands John to emerge with his money, holding Lacey as leverage. Mason strategizes to take down Toro in the heat of the moment, but his plans are thwarted when Toro's men fall into a pre-arranged trap, which results in them accidentally shooting each other. As Toro takes cover in his car, 
John and Mason pick off his men one by one. Toro, feeling cornered, shoots Lacey and reveals his true identity when Mason attempts to retaliate. He is none other than Toro Briggs, the boss of John and Mason. Upon realizing this, fury ignites within John and Mason, and they open fire on Briggs and his henchmen. Despite this, Briggs and one of his men manage to flee into the castle. John pursues Briggs within the castle, but is ambushed and held at gunpoint by him. Briggs orders John to drop his weapon and hand over the 5 million euros immediately. John, stunned by Briggs' actions, questions why he would go to such lengths and murder his brother. Briggs reveals that he was infatuated with Lacey, but she chose Cody over him. John had already had suspicions about Briggs being Toro, based on a video where Toro uses a 1911 series pistol with a silver handle to kill an informant. This was the same type of revolver he had noticed in Briggs' office. Meanwhile, Mason confronts one of Briggs' men, who turns out to be his former police colleague. The man confesses to murdering Volley's family, driving Mason to kill him in a fit of rage. Briggs tries to shoot John but ends up knocking him down instead. John, however, quickly regains his footing and retaliates. During his visit to Briggs' office the previous day, John had stealthily replaced Briggs' bullets with blanks, and Lacey had feigned being shot dead. Now, Briggs has no option but to physically engage with John. Simultaneously, Mason continues his struggle with his former co-worker, leading to both of them killing their respective opponents. Three weeks later, John is seen entering a cafe owned by Lacey. Mason, who was waiting outside for John, also steps in. John is there to meet Lacey, who has now adopted Adina, Cody's last name. John hands Lacey a letter before leaving, in which he assures her that he will always welcome her and her sister if they ever come to New York. He also leaves behind a suitcase containing hundreds of euros, along with the key to the safe where Cody had stashed Briggs $5 million. As they depart, John expresses his gratitude to Mason for his support. Mason, in return, asserts that he is the one who should be grateful to John, because, thanks to him, Mason is now taking Briggs' place in the police force. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.